in recent videos in our video series, Demystifying 5G, we discussed dynamic spectrum sharing. Dynamic spectrum sharing means that 4G LTE and 5G new radio share the same frequency band. We talked about the technological background and I showed you how to use a signal generator and spectrum analyzer to configure DSS and test certain functionality. Of course, uh, this is one aspect of this, but the more important aspect is to test it on a device. So for this, I brought you uh, this test setup here. I brought you the CMX500, Roland Schwartz new mobile radio tester platform for 5G device testing, um, which is teamed up with the CMW500, who provides the LTE functionality, the LTE anchor uh, for the non-standalone mode. So in this setup, as you can see here, if we take a look uh, through our Seam Squares GUI, you see basically I'm emulating an LTE cell um, using band 5 FTD with uh, 5 megahertz of bandwidth. And right next to it is an, an R cell that actually is using the same frequency band and the same bandwidth. So we're already transmitting both. And um, if we look into the log file analysis that I can do at the very same time, uh, as you can see here, we look into the LTE section into system information block type 2. We see here right now that we have MBSFN uh, configured. So broadcast subframes, which were part of LTE release 9, intended, of course, to be used for broadcast, which is an essential part for dynamic spectrum sharing. If we take a closer look here, then you can see that out of the six possible MBSFN subframes, that could be configured, we're actually using two of them right now here. And in those two, we can actually now transmit 5G and R, which we are doing um, at the same frequency um, using the CMX500. Uh, so I brought you here an early 5G device with no DSS capabilities. A very initial step that you want to uh, do if you activate DSS in the network is, of course, that you didn't break LTE. So what we would like to do is register the device within LTE using that band 5 emulated cell, make sure it's connected, make sure end-to-end -end is working, and then we can take a look in that MBSFN subframes where we're broadcasting NR, how that would look like. And for that, I brought you the FSW signal and spectrum analyzer. So we, we try to demodulate uh, that 5G NR signal using our FSW. So for that, let me switch on the device, taking it out of airplane mode, as you can see. So in the lock, you see that my device has now uh, registered. You see the message exchange here. We can also switch back to our test environment, and as you can see from a, a, a DOT type of viewer, it's connected towards LTE. Since it's now connected, we can also take a look if we have an end-to-end -end connection, and voila, we're doing here a simple ping measurement. So that means my device is registers uh, connected to the LTE uh, emulated uh, cell at band 5, and I do have a ping going. So obviously, we are transmitting uh, LTE, my device can work on it, but also we're transmitting NR, um, and that is something that I can show you now with the FSW, so let me set that up for you. So we're looking here at the demodulated LTE signal at the frequency of 881.5 megahertz, as you can see here. So the question is now how we can measure actually the LTE signal. Well, if you take a look at our setup, the RF signal is coming from the CMW500, it goes into that splitter, and it's split up into um, going into the device as well as here into the FSW. So as you can see, we nicely can uh, demodulate the signal. And if we take a closer look at some of these measurements, especially here in that capture buffer, you see incoming um, a signal like here in here. And what these two things are mean is basically it's these two slots that are MBSFN configuration. And once in a while, a signal is popping up, which is the actual transmission of synchronization signal blocks in 5G and R. So if we just go back here and now switching to the 5G and R personality, then we will clearly see we are actually demodulating the signal here. And if I take a closer look at that particular signal, you see that the synchronization signal blocks are being transmitted. I have the constellation diagram here with a QPSK modulation, which means the physical broadcast channel. 
uh, in 5GNR, we see a BPSK modulation, which is actually the primary and the secondary synchronization signal. Um, and um, that's all going on at the very same time that LTE is transmitted. And how I can be sure of that? Well, if I just look at the carrier frequency that I'm demodulating the 5GNR signal at, it's 881.5 megahertz, which is exactly the same frequency that I'm using for my LTE cell. So what I have done today is basically I validated that uh, LTE and NR can use the very same signal. I use the LTE portion of my device to register, to connect, um, and attach to the LTE emulated network at band 5. Um, I verified end-to-end -end performance with a ping, and I looked at the very same time that 5GNR is still Broadcasters. So it's a very initial step. I didn't break uh, anything on the LTE side. And the next step would be now to test actual uh, dynamic spectrum sharing functionality while um, LTE and NR uh, further sharing the frequency band. But this is something that we will explore in another video in our video series, Demystifying 5G.